Yeah. 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 Yeah.
We recently asked on Facebook if our patrons would be interested in using or borrowing equipment to scan their old film negatives and slides, and the response was overwhelming. The bottom line is that the library is here to be whatever you would like to make of it. We're open to your ideas, and we'd love to hear about what you'd like for us to do more of. One great way to get involved is to become a member of our friends group. Uh, they meet every month to talk about ways to support our mission and programming at the library. We currently have a few vacancies on our friends board for anyone that's interested in getting involved. And I'll finish by saying that the library is still actively fundraising for the things that we need, such as furniture, landscaping, and solar panels. You may have read the letter in the Gazette a week or so back um, regarding the need to be as green as we possibly can with the new library. And anyone interested in contributing to the Hadley Library Fund can check out our website or email or call the library. Um, so with that, I'll turn it back over to Carol, who I believe had some questions prepared, right. and we'll do our best to answer them. Well, I was curious, um, Luna, what's your college background? Um, so, I have a little bit of a unique story. I'll just say it briefly. Um, and this, in this way, you will know that librarians are not, there, there's all different kinds of librarians. Um, I was a high school dropout. I quit school and in 11th grade and moved to South America and learned Spanish, um, which is actually helping me very, very much in Hadley, it turns out. Um, yeah, so I lived in South America, then I moved to Europe and lived in Germany and traveled the world. And eventually came back and in my 20s got my GED and went to, um, uh, the College for Public and Community Service at UMass um, Boston and I was becoming a social worker. I wanted to be a social worker and I worked for 15 years in a psychiatric social club in Boston with chronically mentally ill adults and after 15 years and going through college I decided I wanted to do something more fun <laughs> and it got to be pretty hard. I, and I worked with homeless, mentally ill people, which also help, is helpful in Hadley. <laughs> not, um, we don't have very many um, unusual people that come in, not, you know, but sometimes it's, it's helpful. And um, then I went to graduate school in Sim, at Simmons in Boston for library science and became a professional librarian. So, and by that time I was already, you know, 38 or something like that. So um, that was my second career, and um, then I moved out. I worked in ha um, Hudson for five years, and then um, after my kids were old enough, I moved out here to work in Hadley. Glad to have you. Yeah, so yeah, I, I love the library. I've been there almost 10 years, and um, I know a lot of people in this room. And <laughs> It's very fun to be in the senior center. I'm sorry I haven't been here sooner because this is very exciting. It's a nice space and I'm very excited to be um, no Haley and we're gonna do a lot of collaborating in the future. Yep. Excellent, excellent. Yep. All right, so you know what's coming. <laughs> <laughs> so this was actually a second career choice for me as well. Um, I have my degree in psychology and business actually and I also started out doing social work. I worked for um, Cigna Insurance in the Mental Health Division for many years, and then I worked in social services with the Salvation Army. Um, and then I had my daughter, and I wanted to be a stay-at-home mom, so I was home with her for a year, and just to get out of the house and have some adult interaction, <laughs> I started volunteering at my town library. Um, a library assistant position became available, and the director encouraged me to apply, and I did, and kind of rediscovered how much I loved libraries, which I always had as a child. Um, and that position led to me applying for the one in Hadley. That was 11 years ago, and here I am. Excellent, yeah. excellent. Good. Mm -hmm. What kind of classes did you take to learn how to be a librarian? <laughs> um, we had reference classes, and yeah. children's literature was my favorite, but really, I felt like library science school wasn't that interesting to me. Um, I worked in the Cambridge Public Library and in two months I learned more just working with the public and 
in, in Cambridge than like an entire year of intensive graduate study. Um, so just being on the desk, meeting people, running programs, buying books. I, being a volunteer helped me um, a million times more than graduate school. Honestly, you better not let that word out. I know. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> Simmons here. <laughs> I think everyone from Simmons would tell you that too. Um, you know, working, really doing the job gives you what you need to know. Nice. If anybody has a question, holler it out. His um, bookmarks appear made by yeah. Luna's kids at the library. Yeah, actually, I just want to mention so we did a little program at um, Hillside Pizza. Um, I called them and I said, you know, we don't have a space right now or parking for a program. Would you be willing to um, let us do a program at, at Hillside Pizza? Yeah. And they were like, yeah, and we'll give kids free pizza. So um, we, we sent out a flyer to the schools and um, uh, kids who wanted to come make bookmarks for the senior center were given pizza and we had a really fun time. Making some bookmarks. Yeah. That's excellent. It, it was very nice. Hillside Pizza is always giving us pizza, so. <laughs> <laughs> so, kids, how old do you have to be to get a library card? Yeah. Um, technically, you have to be, uh, I believe it's five years old, is technically, but our library is very flexible. And so. To um, reach the table. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I don't believe that we've ever refused anybody a library card. I really don't think so. Um, if you really want a library card, you can get a library card. <laughs> and anyone here who doesn't have one, yeah. go visit the it's library. Very easy. Say, yeah. I have a Jones one. Yes. Jones so library. Can you good. use it in your library? Oh, yes. yes, all the libraries are or interchangeable. Interchanged. Yeah. Yeah. You can use it in state libraries too. State, I go to UMass and use my, you know, because I'm a state resident. You can do, you can go to state colleges and use their libraries. Because I've been in UMass, GCC, any any state, the Hoyo community, you can use their libraries as long as you're a state resident. Um, now, does the Adelaide Library have access to that? Can you get books that are in that library that? Can't be gotten anywhere else? Yes, through our interlibrary loan program, yes. We, we've wow, gotten books good. from UMass and very some of good. the other colleges in the area, yes. So you're the intermediary. <laughs> very good. Would well, yeah. you talk about that CW Mars system? Yeah. Sure, the, the interlibrary loan yeah. system? Sure. So we actually have one of the best interlibrary loan systems in the country. Um, it's just fantastic, fantastic the access that we have. Um, so our area of coverage is you know, all of Western Mass going out to Worcester. So any of those CWMR's libraries, we can access their materials and vice versa. Um, we get three deliveries a week at the library, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So materials often come very quickly. Um, and if you're looking for something and we can't find it within the CWMR system, we're able to access the eastern part of the state and we can even um, talk to the Mass Library Office and they will search the country for books. So we've had books coming from all over the country. And I would note that the Senior Center Book Club always gets 15 copies of the books we're reading, which our library provides for us in a timely manner. And I'd like to say that um, I'm one of the people that uses this interlibrary loan a lot. And they almost every time can find these books, no matter how obscure they are, they will find one it's somewhere out there. And it's just really great to have that able that ability that you, well we have a lot of books right there at the at the library itself but still to be able to find something that's not really that many of them out there this is so great it's yeah. really wonderful it's amazing how quick it is too yes. I, my kids are avid readers and they'll move on to the next book and we'll request it and it'll be in a couple of days later if it's a, a book and we just have yeah. to use it that way. And it's not just books. People request music all the time. DVDs, DVDs oh, magazines. DVD. Yeah. 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 DVDs and <laughs> magazines, <laughs> books on audiobooks, ebooks. And I even though you can you have to you can pick up the book or, or DVD, whatever, at Goodwin, but you can return most of them unless they're in a special collection. Mm -hmm. Most of them at any other library in the system. 
So it's like all one big family in libraries. Hmm. Did you want to explain Canopy to some people that might not be familiar with Canopy? Sure. Canopy is um, kind of the library's answer to Netflix. It's a movie streaming service. Um, and if you log on to the, the Canopy streaming site, you can set up an account. You just need your library card number. And currently, they allow you to have five downloads per month per patron. Ten. Canopy's nice. It's got a lot of um, more obscure things, more documentaries, more art films, things like that. Um, so yeah, our patrons have been enjoying that. We just started that late fall, I think, and it's, it's been great so far. Now, I have uh, a TV that has that Roku on it. Do I need to connect my computer to the TV in order to get that service? Um, if you wanted to watch it on the TV, like you, you could just log in you know, on your laptop or whatever and watch it on the laptop, but then to then send it to the TV, I, I think you would need that. Okay, so that, okay, so there's something extra add to get it to the TV. Though. Correct, okay. yes. But if you have a smart TV, it should just work on your TV the same way you would access the internet, but I don't think the Roku is a full smart TV but anyone who can access their, the internet through their TV should be able to just log into Canopy that same way. Oh, okay. And that's yeah. with a K. Canopy. Yes, Canopy with a K. I, I just had somebody do that for me with, with a Roku that I was given, and I was frustrated because the, I love Canopy, but I was watching it only on the limits of my laptop, and it, it was kind of frustrating because I, I wanted to be able to move around or just be more comfortable. So. Um, so I had a friend give me a Roku that was the older version because the new ones are voice activated, I believe. So anyway, he gave me a new one and I was able to hook it up to my TV, but I wasn't able to do the step where I got Canopy connected. But he came over and I gave him a lunch. <laughs> and then he was able to um, he got set to up do for it. You. Oh, okay. So it, there is some steps involved that I didn't yeah, follow, yeah. and I'm sorry I can't tell you what he did, but okay. it's possible. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Library always works. It <laughs> also has to work too if you've got a Chromecast device to attach to your TV to send it from your computer to a TV. Oh, it's you can do it remotely like that. All right. It's a little round thing with a tab on it that plugs into the side of the TV and then connected to your laptop or your computer. And it, the word cast means cast. I think of it like in fishing, you know, mm -hmm. to send it from my laptop to the TV. And you could do it with television programs or YouTube or whatever you find online and then just cast it to your TV and that will work with Canopy too. They're about 35 bucks if you have to buy one. When well, you need help at your home, find someone who can't vote yet and they'll see <laughs> And if, if it's stuff within the CWMAS, show up at the library and these folks will definitely walk you through it. Temporarily kidnap a 10 year old. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's through the senior center too. You know, you can, you can get help through the senior center. You're right. Yeah, there's, there's two a different couple resources. of folks that'll help out. When to help you set up your computer and when to help you if you need, if you have problems and you want to fix them. Yep, it's usually in the newsletter or newsletter. ask at the office and they'll set you up that way. So, do libraries carry Reader's Digest condensed books? <laughs> <laughs> Some of the classes yeah. we're stuck. It's in the bag. <laughs> <laughs> we don't carry, you know, cliff notes or any of that sort of thing. But um, yeah, for some of our classics, we may have abridged versions. Yeah. yeah, I wouldn't normally buy abridged stuff for kids. Not really. Yeah. Although there was Not a yet. book that was on one of the book club things. It was a it was yeah, Punchback of Notre Dame. If anybody's ever tried to read the original, not good. You must be no, 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 There's a good Disney movie. It's much better. I think it's a Disney version. <laughs> so let's talk about funding somewhat. Does the town of Hadley pay money into CW Mars? 
there are membership no fees. Yeah, yeah, there is a membership fee that we pay every year, and as part of that, we have a certain obligations. We have to do a lot of reporting out to the state, and that's Patrick does that. There's a huge database of information, so um, it's very um, it, it's very useful when we were writing our grants to um, build our new library. We were able to download a bunch of that data and compare ourselves to other towns. Because um, you know, in general, you don't necessarily you know what you have. You don't know what other people have, and that's when we realized, oh, our building is not only old, but you know, some of the services and the amount of you know books, etc., that we have compared to other libraries is really small. Um, versus, like our circulation was pretty high compared to other towns of our size, number of visits, etc. So, um, so that is an obligation that we have. We also, as a town, have a certain obligation. Uh, we have to support the town, the support the library to a certain proportion of the total library budget. And we also have to make sure that we're spending the correct proportion of our budget on books and materials. So we can't just sort of take the library, uh, you know, the library budget and so spend it all on, you know, programming. Uh, even if we wanted to, we had a lot of great programming. So there's a lot of rules and regs that we have to follow. Um, as a library participant in the wider state to get state funding to be part of CWMARS. So, so the funding comes from the state itself? So we have, we get some funding from the state okay. and we get some funding from the town. From the town, mm -hmm. okay. Yep. And the residents? So yes, yeah, so we do, so our friends have been active for a long time and that they have been fundraising for the library for a long time and in the past most of their fundraising has been to some materials and to uh, lots of programming, um, which is they they sponsor the summer reading that kind of thing. So when it came to fundraising for something larger like our building, when we needed um, three hundred thousand dollars, that's when sort of uh, we had started a capital campaign committee to take over the larger fundraising. Um, so and that will be something that we're going to keep ongoing. We'll continue to have a capital campaign, um, a, a group that does sort of annual giving, that type of thing, to make sure that we continue to have enough money to upkeep the building, um, add things as they need to be added. Um, so in addition to the, to the friends. I have a question. How many trustees are there and what are the roles of the trustees versus the friends? Good question. Um, there's actually a little spreadsheet that says, this is what the director does, this is what the friends do, this is what the trustees do. Uh, we have six trustees, it's a six member board. We meet once a month in our regularly scheduled meetings. Um, we meet the second Tuesday. If anyone's ever interested in being a trustee, I would greatly encourage you to come to our meetings. We try to make sure they're posted well in advance of the 48 hours, um, sort of required by open meeting law, but you can come and find out what we do. He is um, an elected position, by the way. We are elected. We serve three-year terms. Three-year terms. Uh, Alan is up again this year, so he will be running for re-election along with uh, Maureen. So you will see their names on the ballot. I don't think anyone else is running. Um, it's not usually a hotly contested um, <laughs> board. Uh, <laughs> it's a great board. It's it's a really great way to uh, to get involved with the library. Uh, we've had a lot of work the past few years um, with trying to get the grants, with uh, evaluating our current building, and uh, now building our building. Um, but. Uh, one of the main things that we do is we are trustees of our building. So if anyone who watched the all board meeting last night, you heard David Tudorin talk about, um, one of the things that they're trying to do is decide what to do with the uh, current Goodwin, which will soon be the quote unquote old library. And he said, this is our best maintained building in town. And part of that is because the trustees put a lot of thought into how do we maintain the building going forward um, I know somebody from the senior center, maybe it was Jane last night, spoke eloquently about the need to maintain our new buildings as we build them. So as a library trustee, that's one of the things we do. Um, we hire um, and evaluate our director, we do some fundraising, we help out as necessary, but we don't run the library. So Patrick runs the library, the staff runs the library with Patrick, um, and so that's where our line is drawn. 
Um, the Friends really are in support of the programming and the library, but they don't have, you know, they're not in charge of the budget, so we are the ones who have to sort of take the budget to the town. This is how much we need for the library. We do this in conjunction with the director. Um, so those are sort of the different buckets that the three groups um, Who is the to. one, I mean, who's responsible for purchasing the books and the DVDs? That's who Patrick and his staff. Who makes the mm -hmm. choices. Yep, so yeah. those are not our decisions. Mm -hmm. I, I buy um, the material for children, mm -hmm. young, ch you know, babies through maybe age 11 mm -hmm. or so, 11 or 12, and um, then Sierra buys things for young adults, so that would be like 12, you know, 18. 30. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Sue buys things for adults. Mm -hmm. The fiction and the nonfiction for adults. Um, what else? Patrick is a big music buff, so he does a lot of the, the purchasing of CDs. Yeah. Um, Karen is, it's nice because our staff has um, varied interests, so it kind of represents, you know, a, a wide range when, when we purchase things. Karen likes um, the classics and more obscure things. I tend to gravitate more towards, you know, the current bestsellers and the, and the popular fiction. Um, so I think we're, we're all a good mix together in, in terms of deciding what to purchase. Mm -hmm. So a uh, question that somebody might have is, how do you decide what to do? Do you take suggestions from people? Do you look to see what's popular on some of the searches? How do you decide what to buy? It's, it's kind of a mixture of things. Um, you know, we get to know our patrons pretty well over the years, so as we're looking through things, I'll say, oh, this will go out, this will never go out. Um, <laughs> you know, the, different things like that. We know our patrons. Um, Often we buy things we like. <laughs> you know, I like that. I hate that. I like that. You know, we get to do that. Uh, um, and sometimes, you know, if a child asks me about, you know, do you have any books on basketball, and and I can't give them something amazing or good, I immediately, the, the minute they walk out the door, I log on and I look up basket. You know, I'll search basketball and I'll buy it immediately because I'll that there's a gap. It needs someone's interested in basketball. And someone, so, so often, our patrons will let us know what they're interested in. And then, yes, Elaine wanted the Cook's Illustrated. Yes. Right, and, and it was gotten for me. But I, I want to give an example. Uh, this summer, I walked into the library, and there were suggestions on the board. And I, I looked at one, and I said, it was... The title was The Soul of an Octopus. And I said, who would read The Soul of an Octopus? And Sue said to me, you're going to love it. And I did. And uh, actually, it was on 60 Minutes, the woman that uh, this Sunday. And it's quite interesting. Yeah. And we will have, what, three to four times as many materials in the library? We'll have a lot more yeah. space. So. Right now, unfortunately, our staff is in the unfortunate position of, for every new book that comes in, every, what has to be one book that goes out, or any other type of material, because we just don't have any space. So they're currently squirreling away a lot of the stuff that usually would just sort of move out and go out back into the system to either go to a different library, be recycled. They're squirreling them away in boxes on the top floor of the library so that when we open our new library, we won't be like, like this room, right? We would be the books clustered in a corner, and that is empty shelving waiting to be filled. So they have been very proactive about saying which are the great books that we know people still like, we just don't have room for them right now. How can we hang on to them so that when we open our doors, we're sort of bringing back some of these things, plus having room to put new things in. So, so that's really exciting. That's something that, you know, was that was their idea, let's do this, and you know, that's great. Because we, we toured some other just opened libraries as part of this whole process, and some of them were pretty empty when we came in, and, that, and that's what they said. They said, well, we just didn't have any books because we didn't have any room in our old place, and so we opened, you know, almost empty. Right, like Sunderland, I don't know if anybody has been to Sunderland. When they opened, they also said it was pretty empty, and now it's full and vibrant and, you know, well used. So that just uh, made me think, will you be hiring uh, new staff to help them once you have more books and more space? That's a great question. 
Uh, so we designed the library so that it could be run with the same number of staff. And that's part of the reason why it's on one floor. It's much easier to run a library on one floor. You have line of sight everywhere, so that you'll see a lot of glass in the interior of our building so that you can see in. Even something like the teen room, which is really a, a self-enclosed room, it's got glass front, so even if the teens sort of close the door to do their Dungeons and Dragons program, the librarians can still see in, so even if they're not in there. Um, because there is no money in the budget currently to increase our number of hours or our number of staff. Um, so even though it would be great to have more hours, more staff to serve the public, right now there's just not money in the budget to do so. So we will be running the, the library right now with the same number of staff. Two quick questions. Are you going to allow art installations and when are you going to open? I can't speak to the art installations, but right now we're targeting late summer, early fall opening. We have that, we have that art exhibit. Yeah, we have them now. I mean, I can't imagine that I mean, we voted against, against, but yeah, nobody's you, really talked about it yet. Yeah. You said lots of glass, so I didn't know if there was uh, yes. a wall. Yep. Well, there's the two ends of the building. Yeah. yeah. So we have a community room that will be really good yeah. for art. Yes. And there will be walls for quilts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For your quilts. <laughs> and if someone <coughs> wanted to display their art, who would they talk to? They would just reach out to anybody at the library. Um, we are often looking for art to display. Right now, as it stands, we don't have a wonderful place to display art. We have um, some wall space that's about six feet up. It's quite high. And it's not very, you know, it's, it's not great. Um, but in the new library, we'll have the community room and we'll probably have, um, you know, a lot of art. So Patrick or myself or Sue, yeah, yeah, any of us. Oh, is the, as far as the computer stations, is that its own separate little room or is that right in, in the library like it is now? It, it's a separate area. It's not an enclosed room, but there will be, I believe, twice the size. I think yes, we budgeted for eight computers, um, and it'll be its own area. And there will be separate in the children's area. There will be computers in the children's area and also in the teen area. So I think that's going to be a huge plus, right? So if you've got a couple of kids, you know, looking at some sort of Minecraft thing and you're trying to work on your resume, you know, it's a little tight quarters in our current building. So I think that's really going to be nice for everyone. So yes, the library has computers, it hooks up to the printer, they'll help you if they can, and uh, so it's a, it's a source. It's a, it's a We're also going to have a little professional center with a copy machine and a fax machine, and um, so you can do all yeah. that stuff. 3D. We've been talking we've about, talked about that. about that. Yeah, we've talked about mm -hmm. it a lot. Not yet, but Not that's yet, definitely yeah. on the road back. Yeah. I have a question. What, um, it seems like an awfully large building. Would you be using that for like educational pursuits? It's, not, it's actually not as big as you think it is. Mm -hmm. It looks big because from the outside, because we wanted it to be a presence on the street. We didn't want it to be a little Dunkin' Donuts type of a building. It's repla remember, it replaced the Hooker, which is a fine looking building, and it, go and it matches up with Goodwin and the Town Hall and Russell. Oh, in the town center. We wanted the library, which is sitting right on the street, mm -hmm. to seem like it, was, it belonged there. Do you want to pass those? And actually, we have some pictures. Yeah. If you want to see what it's going to look yeah. like. Yeah, you have and a couple for each yeah, table? Actually, yeah, actually, yeah. Great, thanks, Al. But, and so, um, yeah, what sort of educational pursuits yeah. were you yeah. looking but, I don't know, maybe Spanish as a second language or oh, something? Oh, programs, yeah. I mean, yeah. we were hoping that we could really expand our programming. I know, like, for example, the Jones has a very vibrant ESL group that meets there. So, yes, this will give us a lot more space so that we can, if folks want to offer sort of classes once a week, et cetera. Like, right now, these guys are having to turn people away because we really don't have that space, especially if you need to be kind of loud, like, you know, speaking so you can learn a different language. But now we'll have separate spaces, not just the community room, but we will have some quiet study rooms. There will be the local history room. So folks can do that. Just to go back to the size of the library, even though it's the building itself has a presence, it's still 12,000 square feet, 
and that is the bare minimum that we needed to have to even qualify, qualify for the grant because it's based on a various number of factors, the size of the town, the patronage. So that, we are not building an oversized library, Taj Mahal, whatever people want to call it. It's the bare minimum that we need to have an adequate modern library. But we also wanted to make it look like something important, which it is. It's an important building in the town center. Yeah, it really is the bare minimum. I'm the one who did the number crunching yeah. for the grant, and this was it because we felt like you know, we wanted to keep the cost to the town as minimum as we could, but still, we're required basically to build a library for 50 years. They ask us for the population projections out 50 years before they will even consider our grant application. So, it will seem huge to us though, because we're used to a lot smaller. So, definitely. And thank you, thank you for chasing down the grant with the state getting almost 50% of the cost from there, and then that's the best case. And this will be all accessible too, right? Yes. 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 That's great. It is great. Because there's a lot of people I know in the area that really would like to go to the library. Yeah. Well, you can get into the first floor of the library now, yeah. but you can't get to the bathroom. I know. But that's the thing. It's so bad. bad. Yeah. You got to plan ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Careful. <laughs> <laughs> mention one thing about programming which I'm very excited about there's so many programs that we can't do now because we don't have any space you know uh, that we're excited about like you know yoga and cooking classes and stuff like that that we have a lot of interest in and um, so in the new building we'll have room to do that and space and, um, yeah Great. so Tell me about the jigsaw puzzles. On one of the window seats, there's a pile of jigsaw puzzles. <laughs> so that's kind of our jigsaw swap area, I guess you could call it. Anyone can come in and take as many as you like and just bring them back when you're done. If you have one you'd like to leave, you can leave it. It's just on our system. We're not checking them in or out. It's just kind of there for people if they'd like. And when the senior center opens up again, we will have jigsaw puzzles there in the same system. They'll be on the shelf, come and go. We'll also have two tables so puzzles can be going on. Wow. You'll be kicking me out of there every day at four. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Um, I walk into the library. You two are at the desk, and I say, Where are the mysteries? So yeah, libraries are kind of, Luna and I would like to see the library organized by genre a little bit more. Right now we have everything alphabetical, um, and that can be difficult. We just kind of rely on our knowledge of, you know, I would talk to you a little bit more about, well, tell me about an author you, you know, read before that you liked and try to figure out and, and point you in the right direction. But it would be nice to um, have things by genre, that the bookstore model, they call it, as, you know, as bookstores do. A lot of libraries are switching to the bookstore model. And genre find and this is something I definitely plan to do for the kids, it, at least for picture books um, and possibly for fiction as well, because I've never, I've never seen a kid, you know, in 15 years come in and say, um, you know, ask me for an author, unless it was like, oh, really? a hair. <laughs> yeah, maybe Patricia Palacco or Mo Willems, or, but usually they want a sports book or an, um, an adventure story or a funny book or trucks. Trucks or pigs. dog stories or pigs or princesses or that's how kids always look for books. So I'm looking for some, uh, I will be looking for some volunteers to help me. That's a, actually a lot of work to take the book, the entire collection and to um, recategorize it. Uh, that's a big project. So nice in the new space too that you can actually turn the books outward so that yes. the kids can read it because they can't they're stacked kind yeah of right, right now and you can't read they're not reading that spine so yeah Luna was telling me that the kids out. need they, to see the cover of the book yeah. and that's, that's what they how people check out they, they check out the books that are on display <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah you know at the Jones Library when they were when I was really young and I always noticed that she would go over to this one section I mean the whole library was like you said stacked vertically except for this one section where they had the books facing out, and that would always be, she'd say, I want to go to the books. 
That was the only show she thought was the books. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's very interesting. Yeah, well, I'm very interested in displaying children's books with cover out as much as possible. You can't do it with every book, or else you'd only have you know. A, small collection, <laughs> but as much as possible, and especially with picture books. But the whole idea was to get them hooked. Yeah. <coughs> get them in there so that they fall in love with books, and they'll go from there. I mean, my, my, grand, my grandkids went to the library for the train table initially, and uh, Jones, but they stayed for the book, so. Do you take donations? We, not at the moment, just because we're, you know, with the whole process of, of moving and we're just so short on space. Um, I'm sure we will go back to, to taking donations. And what's nice about that, if we can't use it in our collection, it goes in our, our book sale, and then all the money goes to the library. Would you talk a little bit about how the be, what's the other, Overlook or something? Overdrive? Oh, Overdrive. Drive. Drive. Yes, so that is um, an app that you can download and that allows you to get um, audio things or ebooks where if you want to read the book on your device. Does any device? It doesn't, uh, yes, it okay. doesn't have to be a phone. No, it doesn't. No, it could be you know an, an iPad or a laptop or you know wh whatever it is that you're using. And that's something we could help you with if you brought your device into the library. We could help you download that app and, and navigate the the catalog. So you're basically virtually checking something out. And it, are they? Um, what's the loan time? Something like that. It's. I believe it's the same as the regular books in the library. I believe it's the three weeks standard. Um. Well, actually, I love e I love listening to books. Mm -hmm. I really do, and I've used it for years. Um, and I've noticed that it gives you a choice. I don't know if anyone else has seen this, where it asks you how long you want it. It says like, it says like one week, two weeks, three weeks. I always pick like the most, just in case. Mm -hmm. But um, it does give you like a choice of how long you want it, and I think it's up to three weeks. And you can renew it, although. Um, I haven't actually figured out how to renew it. I'm always desperate to renew it, and I haven't figured that part out. But um, at least you can get it for three weeks. Are they available instantly? In other words, when you need them, or are not there only so many copies? Not necessarily, unfortunately. If, if you're looking for you know, the, the new John Grisham book or, or something, you know, James Patterson, something very popular, there only are certain number available to check out, so you would have to put a hold on it, just as you would a, a regular book in the library. Unless, when I look for something, I, um, I narrow it down to what's available now. So, you know, because you can limit the search to what's available, and then you can um, find something that's available right that minute. Um, that's how I look for my stuff, because I often want to listen to it like then and not in six weeks. Um, and I, I do have a couple things. I put a few things on hold and it tells you approximate, it says there are three people ahead of you and that you'll probably, you know, estimated time will be like March or something. And because of that, that wait time, uh, if I'm, I'm, I want to read a book, I want to get it when it's available, I'll download it, put it on the computer and then transfer it to the iPod when I'm ready to listen to it. And then just bring it, bring the, the yeah. discs back. <coughs> I mean, it's a long roundabout process, but. Well, somebody might be able to help you with that, but yeah, you should be able to do it directly on whatever device you want to use it on. Yeah. You shouldn't have to do that extra um, it's, it's borrowing things, it's not giving it to you forever. <coughs> well, I don't want forever. You know, no. a limited amount of space anyway on your device. Yeah. But say I belong to a book group. Yes, she can Because we don't decide much in advance. It's like, okay, this is a book for next month. And if you can't get it uh, as a you know, uh, paper copy or a, a CD, what is this next option on Libby or Overdrive? I thought I heard you say to put it on some other device. Or, it doesn't, it only lets you have it um, in the. No, I physically app. get the CDs from the library. Oh, yeah. <coughs> Load them with the oh. computer, and then when I'm ready to listen to them, yeah. then I put it on the iPod. Oh. Right. That's completely. So I can walk around. Yeah. It, it might be illegal, but it's possible. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say, yeah, that's possible. <laughs> 
stuff going on. Yeah. But you can't do that with Libby. Yeah. They're copyrighted. Yeah, they're copyrighted. They can't copy. But not if you're downloading and actually copying the content. Because that's um, license. You wouldn't be the first person to do it. It's amazing that it's set up that you can copy that way. You might go to the scratch that from the film. Well, <laughs> it works for you. Yeah, it works for you, right? I mean, it's a nuisance, but... Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. with Libby, that, that is not possible. They don't let you copy it from Libby. But we with a CD... You need to, presumably, right? Yeah. No, you'd go in directly and just use it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. Great. It's, I have to excuse myself to get my kids off the bus. So thanks so thank much, you so much for having me. It was Megan Megan. Yeah. Megan. Great. Hey, thanks. Great. All right. Um, theft. No, it's not in the country. Do things go missing? Do we lose things to robbery? Very seldom. Very rarely. Very seldom. And have we almost never? We do not have a problem with theft, except for. Star Harry Potter. Wars, Harry Potter. <laughs> Those Harry are the two Potter biggest. Harry Potter and Star Wars. Oh, yes. mm -hmm. The DVDs. The DVDs, yes. not the books. Yeah. Right, Sue mentioned that people will take the jacket, pull the disc out, put the jacket back on the shelf. But that's only for those two items. We've had to buy them a gazillion times. Keep the, the discs under your desk and just have the jacket. Yeah. Just for those two items. Yeah. 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 But, but we're not the Boston Public where they lost a uh, million dollars worth of rare books and maps uh, over mm -hmm. the years. No. And that in fact, it was just another case that came up. It was, it was the Carnegie Library, I think, in Pittsburgh. Uh, they had uh, a problem with the curators deal. Uh -huh. so, but uh, uh, Star Wars is not in that same class. No. <laughs> and it's, you know, $20 to replace it, and we replace it. You don't have dues anymore if somebody returns things late. Fines. fines. No fines. No fines. Well, if you, they're never returning, you'll, you'll be fine. Right, if you've lost something. Or your dog eats it. Or your dog <laughs> eats it. <laughs> you will we'll, we'll need to replace it, but only if we decide we want it. You know, we want it back. If we decide, like, that old thing, we don't care about it, we'll erase it and just delete it. Um, our staff really does not believe in fines. We, it, the amount of money fines takes in is a very small amount. Um, and what we gain instead of the $10 or the $15 or some small amount is um, people use the library, they're happy to use the library, and they're not so stressed out about fines. A lot of people say like, oh, I don't wanna take out too many books or, or even, some people don't even want to use the library at all because they're worried about mm -hmm. getting things back on time and accumulating fines. And we're just like, don't worry about that. Use the library. Enjoy it. The books are for you. And our goal is to make people happy and to make people like the library and feel comfortable um, and not worry about, you know, if it's a week later or anything like that. We don't actually care. We just want you to enjoy what you're taking out. And that's... We've always felt that way, even before it was an official rule. We were constantly erasing your fines anyway. Um, yeah. So, unless somebody else is waiting for that. We can get it. If somebody's waiting for something, we can get you another copy from another library in three to five days. Um, so. Well, and also, if someone is a chronic abuser, yeah. Uh, you know, we just don't. We just we could suspend their, their borrowing privileges, I suppose. Isn't, isn't, isn't that one of the? Yeah. Uh, um, anyway, I don't think we've ever done that, but. You know, speaking from personal experience. You know. <laughs> you when, know I was, when I when I was a kid taking books out of the library, I was in great fear of the librarian. We hope nobody's in great fear of us, <laughs> and if somebody owns like owes a lot of money, um, you know, we'll work with we, we can work with people. We have no desire for anyone to be fearful or anything like that. We can work with anybody on their, their account. And if they are blocked at other libraries, we can still check stuff out to you. We're really eager to help you, and that's, we feel like that's our goal. We're not there to be the police of books or something like that. We're there to help everybody in Hadley and surrounding towns.
period. No, like, you know, nothing, nothing else matters. Um, You're not one of those librarians who wants all the books back in the library no. lined up nice and... <laughs> no, and if you lose your card, we'll give you a new one for free. And if you lose the, the next week, we'll give you another one for free. And we won't guilt trip you or roll our eyes. We'll just do it <laughs> happily. You can lose your card every month. We're, we're just like a friendly library, and we all are on the same page about that. We're on the same page about being welcoming and friendly and easygoing and flexible. Those are our values as librarians. And more and more libraries are getting rid of fines and adopting this kind of attitude. So, and it's actually a treat. You can actually walk into any library in the CW Miles area and take books out right there at their desk. So if you love the architectural libraries and you're, you're roaming around the area, stop in at some of these other libraries. They're gorgeous. I'm a patron that has come up through as a child being very aware of when is it due, when is it due, get it back in time. And so it, it, that was a new thing to me to suddenly, am, do, I do, do I owe you money? <laughs> but, but the thing that's been most helpful is to be on the computer and have the computer notices Renew come in and say, your book yeah. is due. Yeah. It can be re renewed yeah. for you know, a certain length of time. Mm -hmm. and, and so that's been very helpful in keeping me not quite so paranoid about when is my book too? <laughs> Doesn't CWMRs automatically renew? Yes, yeah, so for those of you who don't know, about three or four months ago, CWMRs started an automatic renewal of items that were out. So if you don't have the item back on the due date, if, if no one's waiting for it, it will automatically <coughs> renew for another three weeks or whatever the circulation period was. Good. Tell me about the milk jug. Sort of in lieu of fines, we do have a little milk jug. It's like one of those a old, big milk jug. Yeah, it's a big. <laughs> it's like two feet high or something. Uh, it's a big, heavy thing. Um, Up near the desk. And the if you want to throw in a quarter or a dollar, sometimes people throw in a five-dollar bill. We we take donations. If people think they have fines and you know, and they want to donate a little money, um, that's the uh, petty cash or. It goes to the friends of the library. Um, so we don't know how much money is in there. It's, it's pretty heavy, though. But it's mostly like pennies and quarters. <laughs> yeah. Maybe oh, when you make the transition before. over, you empty it and start yeah. fresh. Yeah. Just yeah. to you see what's fresh. in there, you yeah. know? Yeah. And, yeah. and you'll need the money, too. Often you know? people, um, you know, often people give us their penny cash or a little donation. It goes, you know, it helps out. We always take donations. If people um, purchase books from our um, little book sale, which is down in the basement, which is ongoing all the time, you can go down there and take out um, our discarded books. And uh, you can give us a couple dollars. People say, how much are these? And if you have a dollar or two, we say a dollar or two. And if you have no money, you can have them for free. We're not picky. We're not rigid about this. And the money would go in the milk jug. And if you make photocopies, the little your dime will go in the milk jug. Excellent. Yeah. Do you have folks that hang around the library all day? We do. Not a lot, but, but we definitely do have people who are um, on the computer all day or just you know working in the in the back room at the table. Are they homeless? Us. Yeah, we've had a few homeless people who are there during the day. And, um, you know, it's fine. Everybody's welcome. You can, you know, you can come in the minute we open and stay until we close. We've never had a, you know, a problem. Um, never, never, never. Um, you have the bus stop right there. Yeah, yeah. we do. Yeah, we have uh, some kids that are there um, pretty much every day too, every after school. Um, and sometimes we have people who like to study out of the house who don't want to be at home and they'll just sit and use the computers for hours on, and working on um, schoolwork or something like that. We have a couple of writers that come in, freelance writers, yeah. and they, you know, they don't want to be, have the distractions of home and their phone and all of that. We have one who comes in who gives me his phone to hold <laughs> while he's working. <laughs> That's a good, I should do that. <laughs> Dynamite. Uh, last question.
questions. One question. Um, you know, the area of the libraries change your geographical new area. The senior is center is in a geographical new area. You're closer to people's homes. You're closer to people's crops. I wondered if there was any thought to make both campuses non-smoking, no smoking in the parking lot. Yeah, so uh, she brought this question to us um, beforehand. Sue and I talked a little bit about this, and um, this seems like a great opportunity for a good collaboration between the senior center, the library, and the town, just so we all understand what are the rules and regs around smoking on town properties, and also not just sort of while we are there, but what if we are, um, you know, folks are using our community rooms, some of your rooms, what if they're using them on off hours? How can we best protect ourselves by writing those in, um, you know, the policies and procedures that you guys talked about last night? Can we put this in there so that if, if you are in violation of this, your privileges are now gone, you're no longer free to use our facility? Because I agree with you, as we have these beautiful new buildings, like, let's keep them upright, let's not give ourselves fire hazards or, you know, litter the environment. Jean. So Joanne and I, Joanne from the library, uh, Joanne's on which committee? I can never uh, Joanne's a trustee. She's the chair of our trustees. So Joanne and I spoke last night after the meeting, and on your meeting on the 10th, I'm going to come and present something for your approval so that we can jointly present it to the select board to make both buildings and the Lot just smoke free. Awesome. I think it's best for everyone. Yeah, I mean, so right, we can, we, that's sort of what we were talking about. We can put as many signs as we want, but if we're not there, so, uh, so I don't know about um, what your plans are in terms of your building, but our plans are even if our building is not open, we are going to have the ability, we have the ability to lock down essentially all of our. Um, materials and our community room can be accessed you know we'd have a code or whatever for folks who wanted to come and you know like my Girl Scouts could meet there right and I would come afterwards but none of the staff is there so if my Girl Scouts and I want to be smoking in our meeting obviously we're not but who's there to say that we can't do it right so how do we protect ourselves um, and you know so if you have cigarette butts or if you you know you're not treating the room properly it's not just smokers you know, not to call out smokers, but if you leave the room in complete disarray, you know, trashing stuff, you know, where are our protections so that we don't get stuck with this again? Obviously, it's happened once, but then you're not going to let that group or whatever come and use your facility again. So, yeah, so I think working together so that we all have the same expectations, um, I think it's going to be easier for both of us to enforce rather than have folks sort of jumping back and forth between us trying to find, you know, where can I slip nobody, in. Nobody needs to be smoking inside if they can smoke and go outside. Yeah. So but the point is not to smoke outside either, right? Yeah. 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 Are they being able to cameras? smoke outside? Yeah, um, you know, so we talked about, about the security cameras, and we, we brought that to the, um, that was one of the questions that the architect asked us, um, you know, do we want to have a security system? We're going to be wired for a security system, but there are also a lot of questions about privacy that come up, um, but I think that there is going to be some sort of minimal security, maybe just facing, facing out. Um, on the outside of the building, and this was something that we brought to the select board to say, what is your take on this? What should we be doing? What helps the liability insurance of the town? So I don't know, Jane, what, what yours will be doing. I think we were trying we to get have more security because we are concerned, frankly, about seniors falling outside. Yeah. Yeah. So our, we're fully cameraed. But outside and outside. Oh, inside as well. Okay. The same, same issue. Yeah. Somebody's down the hall has a heart attack there on the floor. You can respond to that from the monitor and the computer's all we had as opposed to waiting five minutes until somebody walks by and says, oh, did you know? So. Yeah, we've talked more about having security on the outside. For instance, like maybe putting one on the old Woodwind, pointing it towards the front door uh, of the library. Um, not so much inside. 
But I mean, I don't think it's, that's necessarily an absolute final decision. No, like I said, we've decided that we're going to sort of hedge our bets and wire the whole thing, just like we're wiring for um, to eventually have an electronic charging station for a car. We don't really have the money for that when we open our doors, but we will have the wiring for that. So in the future, we will be able to quickly and easily put that in. Same with the security system. We're going to be wired for that. So if it, if the town thinks that's in the best interest, then it's all wired and ready to go. Are, are the school properties already small frames? Yes, they are. Must be. Mm -hmm. So there must be some kind of policy. Exactly. Right. So all we have to do is get it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's what I thought. All right. Why isn't there a town policy? Mm -hmm. why, why town why? policy is not in town buildings, and the school has expanded it to the school lot, yard, whatever you want to call it, space, which in, at Hopkins includes the playing fields. I know. I see a yeah. sign, as I pull into Target, there's a sign that that whole parking lot's a non-smoking yeah. school. Yeah. So it, it's, it's all right. Yeah, it's, if, we, if we don't have a no-smoking policy, it would be the exception, yeah. not the rule. Yeah. I just want to mention that in the time I've worked at the library, I've never this has never been a problem. I mean, I, I agree that it's a good idea to have a no smoking zone, but it's it's actually never, we, we haven't had a policy, and it's never been a problem before. Nobody's asking for an ashtray? Never. <laughs> <laughs> no one's asked, and I've never found a cigarette butt. I mean, it has not been a problem, good. ever. Good. I'm curious about the, need, the perceived need to ban smoking from parking lots. I don't. That's not obvious to me that that's necessary, and I'm curious about other people's thoughts about that. So part of our thoughts on that was for people who have chemical sensitivities, if you sit in your car and huff and puff, and then come in the building, <coughs> you'll smell. I think you will anyway if you're in your car that you always smoke in, whether you're in a parking lot or not, so I don't think it's protecting people to ban it in the parking lot. Well, sometimes when you're wanting to enter a building, you go through the gauntlet of smokers who congregate near a door mm -hmm. and if you don't want to be one of the smokers you have no choice mm -hmm. so that's probably why Just so you perceive it as um being a way to deter people from standing around and smoking outside around the entryways uh -huh. mm -hmm. which is why i mentioned that it's never ever been a problem for even two seconds it's Good. never been a problem Good. i mean yeah, I've never seen a butt on the ground never. at the library there. No. But yeah, it, picks them up is there a problem here? No. Do you have it out? Right. Uh, not no. here. We used to have a problem in the other building there. You had a problem in the other building. Yeah. Okay, I just never noticed it. Okay. But the, um, a lot of employers are saying, it was in the paper, I think, last week, of stopping the employees from smoking outside now. It was, um, yeah, I think it's an interesting conversation. Yeah, maybe yeah. it needs to be not on the property, but sit in your car, and that's okay. Yeah. Let's not just let's not. We can't figure it out right now. No, I just wanted to. Yeah. Make sure. I think we could move on. Feeling totally. Um, getting ready for a wrap up. I just have one more question. I was just curious, how much of uh, proportionally, how much of your um, time and space is devoted to books compared to media things like um, CDs and movies and computer stuff. I, I believe we're at 50% of the print books and then the, the remaining 50% is a combination of um, you know, DVDs, CDs. Years ago um, that was, I had gone to the library for you know, 40, 50 years. It was not like that at all. That's good. Did you know that the Obama library is all digital? Is that all all digital. digital, no books, no no physical books. <laughs> One thing that I just found that's very interesting is just since Patrick took over the music by <coughs> buying all the music, um, on a day every time we, we do the interlibrary loan delivery, or I'm just shocked. I mean, it's like music, music, music. I'm like, holy cow! We have stacks and stacks of music that goes out mm -hmm. and that comes back. I mean, that we never had before um, recently. Tons. We were circulating an, a, an amazing amount of music. Um, that's one thing I've just noticed recently and been super surprised.
in my family, I really like the videos because my husband can't read well, and books are just a torture. It takes him five years to read one book. So we do videos all the time, and it's just a, it's great to have the resource uh -huh. and the CW Mars too because we can get them in other libraries. Yeah. So in the wrap-up, I really appreciate the audience, people coming. And I was looking over the uh, website for the library, reading through the policies, and they mentioned the freedom to read. And these fine folks are protecting our freedom to read. Thank you. Great. Um, snacks? Bookmarks? Thank you, Carol, for making this happen.